Let's talk about China's high-speed rail network and the unveiling of their new and extremely fast maglev train, which can travel upward to 600 kilometers per hour. Let's talk about what that means for China's own internal development and its plans to expand its high-speed rail network beyond its borders as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. And of course, let's talk about the U.S. and the malign actors it is backing in the region to try and stop this. Let's get started. From CNN, China debuts world's fastest train, a maglev bullet train that can reach speeds of 600 kilometers per hour or uh, 373 miles per hour, if you're still doing that, has made its debut in Qingdao, China. Developed by the state-owned China Rail Railway Rolling Stock Corporation, it's considered the world's fastest train. And if you see the CRRC logo if you're in thailand and if you ride mass transit in bangkok you might have seen that logo because thailand has recently been buying a lot of rolling stock from china china already has the world's fastest uh, maglev train it is the shanghai maglev it travels 30 kilometers from pudong airport to the outskirts of shanghai and then from there you take the metro into the city or anywhere else you want to go uh, and so China is unveiling this maglev. Where will this maglev take people? They're actually talking about connecting major cities with this maglev. This would cut down travel time even further than their high-speed rail network already has. Now China has been expanding its high-speed rail network beyond its borders. It, they have a line from Kuoming through Lao through northern Lao to the capital of Vientiane, right on the Thai border. And then from there, they're going to extend the network through northeast Thailand to Bangkok. Uh, the Bangsa Grand Station, uh, just completed and will be operational here very soon, will host Thailand's first high-speed trains. And they will run from, from Bangkok to Lao, through Lao to Kuoming and then beyond. Now, China's high-speed rail network is a success story. They move billions of people every single year. When I say that, I mean passengers ride the train more than one time a year. And when you add up all of those passengers, their, their trips, it's in the billions. So this is from Global Times. This is Chinese state media. China, China's high-speed rail carries record 10 billion passengers. 10 billion passengers. That's more than there are people on Earth. If you remember, years ago, uh, the West was saying that China was wasting its time and money building this high-speed rail network. Nobody would ride it, they said. Business Insider article from 2011, the backlash is brewing against Chinese high-speed rail. Here's why it's in trouble. And of course, it's not in trouble. And now the Western media is saying it's in trouble because they've expanded it too far and they need to stop. Of course, they want China to stop doing things that are successful. Uh, it says here, the problem is that high-speed rail is expensive both to build and to operate, requiring high ticket prices to break even. The bulk of the long-distance passenger traffic, especially during the peak holiday periods, is migrant workers for whom the opportunity cost of time is relatively low, even if they could afford a high-speed train ticket, which is doubtful given their limited incomes, they would probably prefer to conserve their cash and take a slower, cheaper train. China has experienced immense growth and the high-speed rail network in part has contributed towards that. Now people can afford tickets on the train. Uh, some of these lines are very profitable. Some of them lose money, but that's not the point of building infrastructure. Not everything is about only profits directly from the infrastructure. A lot of it is enabling other things to grow, things that could not grow without this infrastructure. So you take the loss on the infrastructure because you're gaining so much more everywhere else. Uh, this is what happens when you have a government like China's that's able to see the whole picture and make decisions that way instead of myopically obsessing over profit in every single project that you do. That is doomed to failure because everything has to work in concert and not everything can be uh, 
you know, maximized for profit. And we see the same uh, nonsense being rolled out by the U.S. State Department through Voice of America, which is U.S. State Department media. Lao braces for promise peril of China's high-speed railway. This was March 2021. And they're repeating the same nonsense that we saw the Business Insider saying over 10 years ago uh, about how, how can Lao possibly afford this? Their economy is so poor. It's so poor because it's landlocked. They have no way of connecting to economies in the region. If you've ever traveled through Lao, and I have, it's mountainous. Before China came in and built highways, it took three days to go from the Chinese Lao border to Vientiane, the capital on the border with Thailand. It took three days through winding mountainous roads, extremely dangerous. Those highways cut the trip down to a day, and now with the high-speed rail, it will be cut down to just hours. And so now Lao will have links to Thailand and China. People can get on that train. Goods can get on those trains and they could be anywhere in the region in just hours. This is a huge leap forward, and this will accelerate economic growth in Laos. It will enable them to pay off the, the costs of building this infrastructure. That is what a sound investment is. This isn't the only way they're trying to detract from the projects. They actually do have people actively working to stop these projects. Uh, for example, this is an article from 2018 Thailand needs Hyperloop, not China-built high-speed rail. Tanatan. This is published in the Bangkok Post, but it's originally from Bloomberg News. This is uh, October 2018, and this is Tanatan. He's the uh, billionaire leader of the opposition here in Thailand. And before the 2019 general election, he was in the United States lobbying for political support, which should tell you everything you need to know about why he would say something like this. He visited the Hyperloop test track in Nevada. This is a 500 meter test track. Uh, they have mock-ups, they have this test track. They moved two test subjects down this 500 meter test track. That is all Hyperloop has, has done so far. It will be years and years when and if the Hyperloop ever goes operational and starts moving passengers in the United States. And then by the time they're ready to export technology like this to Thailand, we're, we're talking 10, 20, 30 years in the future. Uh, by that time, Thailand has already missed its opportunity. Uh, all of these other countries are going to be benefiting from the Belt and Road Initiative while they wait on this, this technology that may or may not be developed fully. This is Tanatan uh, back from the U.S. and he's saying, a tycoon turned politician who opposes Thailand's military government has criticized its uh, $5.6 billion high-speed rail project with China because Hyperloop technology offers a more modern alternative. Again, this is technology that for all intents and purposes does not exist operationally. An option such as Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop One, which is working on building networks of pods traveling at airplane-like speeds, is better for Thailand as it would help the nation to be a technological leader, according to future forward party head Tanatan Jung Rung Ruangkit. If you invest in high-speed trains, all you do is import everything from abroad, whereas in Whereas with the Hyperloop, there's an opportunity to build the industry in Thailand if you move first, Mr. Tanaton said in an interview. This is what U.S. proxies do. They condemn and try to block these projects, these viable, uh, realistic infrastructure projects, and then they offer you practically nothing, literally nothing as an alternative. The Hyperloop does not exist. People might remember me mentioning this article. This is from 1997. What China knows that we don't, the case for a new strategy of containment by Robert Kagan. He's one of the architects and proponents of the illegal 2003 US-led invasion of Iraq. And here he is back in 1997, talking about how the US needs to encircle and contain China, and if we come down here, Chinese leaders worry that they will play Gulliver to Southeast Asia's Lilliputians, with the United States supplying the rope and stakes. This was the U.S. strategy of encouraging nations in Southeast Asia to complicate relationships and, and ties with China or cut them off all 
together to encircle and contain China. And Tanatan is one of these Lilliputians. He's one of these tiny, tiny little people that the U.S. has working for them. And he is going to try his best to tie down China by blocking this high-speed rail project and offering literally nothing as an alternative. So it really is a choice that countries need to make and the people in these countries need to make. People in Thailand, for example, have to decide whether they want to follow someone like Tanatan, who wants to cancel viable projects that will definitely drive development in Thailand uh, in exchange for a fantasy that literally does not exist. And Tanatan, who is being sponsored and backed by the US, a nation that is fading from the global stage, or do they want to finish this project that Thailand is already doing with China and cooperate and work with a nation on the rise? It's, it seems like a no-brainer to me. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for all the links to these articles and documents that I've referenced, as well as for ways you can help support my work, like by becoming a Patreon member. Through Patreon, you help support my work month to month. I give some of my Patreon members a sneak peek at upcoming videos. There's lines of communication where we can talk and share ideas and kind of build a community around this work. To everyone that has been helping me, thank you so much. I could not do this without your help. Uh, people are helping in all kinds of ways, not just through Patreon or one-time donations, but also by just sharing my work with other people. And as always, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.